Item ID AEP-007. Enclosure designation. Meridian. Threat classification. Anom-04. Adaptive enclosure protocols. AEP-007 is located at Site-275 in Russia. It is currently enclosed inside a 3.5 square meter, approximately 43 feet, soundproof room with 0.3 meter, 1 foot, non-conducting aluminum alloy walls. The room is comprised of standard oak wood flooring, has two security cameras, and an isolated 5.5 meter observational glass window. Division 2 security clearance is required to enter AEP-007's enclosure cell. Inside is a desk with a chair, a television set moderated by association personnel, a bookcase, a standardized bed, and a large mat with various games. Two ADF on-duty personnel are to be located outside of AEP-007's enclosure area. Guards posted near AEP-007 are not permitted to have on-hand tasers due to the nature of AEP-007's anomalous abilities. Approximately every three months, a B-class engineer will inspect the walls of the enclosure cell and repair if need be. AEP-007's food provisions will be brought to them by an O-class. AEP-007 is to undergo conscious sedation daily and administered grade A sedatives. Procedure 963 Lux is to be running at all times. If AEP-007 is not sedated within 30 minutes upon waking and is showing extreme anger or irritation towards association personnel, Security Procedure 295 Euclid must be executed immediately. Show Procedure 963 Lux. AEP-007's brainwaves are to be monitored while sleeping during the procedure. Any abnormal fluctuations are to be reported to Dr. Osikiene and other researchers involved with the research of AEP-007. Show Security Procedure 295 Euclid. AEP-007's hallway is put on lockdown during this procedure. Only B-class personnel are allowed in the hallway. If AEP-007 breaches enclosure, tranquilize and recontain the AEP. Description. AEP-007 is a female of Slavic descent in a traditional East European dress. See image. AEP-007 does not appear to physically age over time. AEP-007 is capable of understanding Russian, Ukrainian, and English. AEP-007 is accompanied by AEP-007-1, an unidentifiable skull bearing resemblance to a skull of the primal Australopithecus africanus species that shows no sign of anomalous qualities. AEP-007 is able to manipulate organic see experiment 007-1 and synthetic objects through electromagnetism relating to electricity and magnetism. AEP-007 is also capable of the creation of sensory illusions through manipulation of brain waves in the range of their EM field. If prolonged, brain failure may occur from nerve damage. See incident. AEP-007's abilities and immensely powerful EM field still remain unexplained. The array located near the site where AEP-007 was retrieved. AEP-007 was retrieved by ART Task Force New 13 in the town of Ukraine on 1990. AEP-007 was retrieved near the array in the Chernobyl exclusion zone. ART personnel recovered AEP-007 after investigation by Association Intelligence into rumors of a Soviet mind control research facility located within the Chernobyl exclusion zone. Recovered Soviet documents suggest that scientists attempted to replicate AEP-007's EM field as to create mind-altering military array for psychological warfare and mind control. Addendum 1A AEP-007 has been observed being able to release electrical currents, generating moderate amounts of heat, and being able to attract and repel small objects when sedated. The anomalous abilities appear to render photographic equipment useless, making documentation difficult. Further research is needed into the effectiveness of AEP-007's grade A sedatives. Show experiment 007-1. Two O-class personnel were ordered to enter AEP-007's enclosure area. AEP-007 
007 showed signs of distress when O-Class personnel entered the room. O-39649 was ordered to attempt to communicate with AEP-007, resulting in no response. O-29481 was ordered to attempt to communicate with AEP-007-1. This immediately caused AEP-007 to become deeply distressed and defensive of AEP-007-1. Both O-Class personnel were ordered to leave. O-Class personnel underwent neuroimaging after the experiment was concluded. O-39649 and O-29481 both had suffered minor nerve tissue damage. Further analysis shows that AEP-007's EM field has a range of circa 40, 40 meters that, with close proximity, can cause minor nerve tissue damage and adverse health effects if prolonged. However, the effect of the electromagnetic field is halved due to sedition. Site Administrator approved the revision of AEP-007's enclosure area to compensate for the range of its anomalous abilities, as well as reinforcing the walls with non-conducting aluminum alloy. Show Incident 096-7. AEP-007 attempted to breach enclosure on... Soon after initial enclosure, AEP-007, at the time of the Incident 069-7, was not put on sedatives. The camera in AEP-007's was destroyed upon inspection after the incident. AEP-007's enclosure area door was destroyed as well via magnetic pull. AEP-007 was tranquilized upon leaving the hallway. On the autopsy of two killed ADF personnel guarding the enclosure area, it was found that both suffered from brain failure due to the immense EM field emitted by AEP-007. AEP-007 was reclassified as Threat Class 04 from Threat Class 02 following the incident. Show Interview Log 007-1. Interviewer. Dr. Polina Osikiene. Subject. AEP-007. Location. AEP-007 Enclosure Area Site 275. Russia. Forward. Dr. Osikiene has been cleared to enter AEP-007's enclosure and communicate with AEP-007. Two additional ADF personnel are posted inside the enclosure area. This interview has been translated from Russian to English. Begin log 1.30 p.m. 06, 2000. The audio begins with Dr. Osikiene clicking a pen. How are you, AEP-007? AEP-007 did not respond. Dr. Osikiene. Am I making you uncomfortable? AEP-007 can be heard picking up AEP-007-1 and sitting down on the bed. AEP-007. Why are you recording this? Dr. Osikiene. Would it make you feel better if I don't record this? AEP-007. It would. The recording device can be heard being moved away from AEP-007, but not turned off. Dr. Osikiene. All right, Seven. Why did you attempt to breach enclosure on... AEP-007. I would rather not be experimented on by the Association. However, the Association does not seem overly cruel. It is acceptable, but not optimal. Dr. Osikiene. You're familiar with the association as an entity? AEP-007. Of course I am. Dr. Osikiene. Do you harbor any hatred towards the association or their personnel? AEP-007. No, but the freedom to walk around this complex would be optimal. Dr. Osikiene. What can you tell me about that skull? You seem defensive of it. AEP-007. I first found Vasily years ago. It is a memoir to my past, I guess. Dr. Osikiene. You named it? AEP-007. If you were attached, you would name something, too. Dr. Osikiene. I guess that's a fair reason. Anything you would like to tell me about yourself, or where you originate from? AEP-007. I don't know where I originate from. I have never really thought about that. I do like literature and music, though. 
It is pleasant. Do you have any family members? Are you familiar with any other AEP objects? AEP 007. No, I don't believe so. Dr. Osikiene. I only have one question for now. Could you explain your anomalous abilities and their origin? AEP 007. I don't remember that either. There is not much that I really remember at all. Dr. Osikiene. That's all, Seven. Dr. Osikiene exits the room. AEP 007. Goodbye, Doctor. I look forward to speaking to you again. End log, 1.40 p.m. 06, 2000. Value assessment. Until AEP 007's anomalous abilities are understood, the value of AEP 007 to the association cannot be assessed.